for all your Yaka bills conveniently. Open the My Airtel app to buy Yaka units. Airtel Money. Simple, secure, borderless. It is the 15th day of October 2021. Welcome to the UBC News Tonight with me, your news anchor for the night, Wadulo Mark Anold Mugalu Muhammad on sign language. Let's take a look at tonight's top stories. Brought to you by How to get points. Just use MTN to make calls, send SMS, load airtime, buy bundles, all pay for MTN subscription services. Everywhere you go, MTN. In our top stories tonight, President Yori Kikuta Museveni commends UJCC for uniting followers. In other news, hundreds turn up for COVID-19 jobs in Kampala. Sejirinya slapped a fresh charge for inciting violence. And in sports, Uganda to use Tony to garner points for Commonwealth Games. Was brought to you by Everywhere You Go, MTN. Once again, thank you for joining us. We now give you the news in detail. To start off, President Yori Kaguta Museveni has highly commended members of the Uganda Joint Christian Council uniting as well as nurturing their followers, not only spiritually but also empowering them economically. The president was meeting members of the Joint Christian Council led by the co-chairperson and executive secretary of the council, Right Reverend Archmandrit Constantine Mbonavinji, who paid a courtesy call on him at State House Lodge Nakasero. Other members of the delegation include the Archbishop of the Church of Uganda, His Grace, the Most Reverend Dr. Samuel Stephen Kazim Babu Galu, among others. President Museveni thanked them for involving young people in the work of God and also taking care of the welfare of their followers. The Archbishop of Uganda and his of the Archbishop of Uganda, His Grace the Most Reverend Stephen Mugalu appreciated President Museveni for his support to the council. Furthermore, Kampala residents continue to throng KCCA gazetted vaccination centers to receive their COVID-19 jabs. It's now a week since Uganda procured her first Johnson & Johnson vaccine, the first ever to be brought using her funds to boost the quantities to sustain vaccination exercises. We'll take a look. The Ministry of Health recently resumed mass vaccination in Kampala Capital City Authority, KCCA, gazetted vaccination centers aimed at covering at least 4 million Ugandans. <laughs> In Kampala divisions, the turn-up of persons seeking to be vaccinated has been overwhelming since the exercise resumed on 11th October. At Old Taxi Park Vaccination Center, over 6,500 persons have so far been vaccinated with at least 2,000 taking the jabs on a daily basis. 
at State Square Vaccination Center, the turn up is equally impressive. Those who received their first jobs shared their experiences and called upon the public to embrace the exercise. I advise all people outside there, come and we get the immunization of COVID-19. It is good, you can't travel anywhere without immunization. Yeah, that's How all. do you feel after receiving the job? I feel well, no problem. I, I don't have any problem. <laughs> Mark Shoni Bay Hospital, Rosida Prison's medical doctor, Ronald Murungu, shares statistics of those registered at State Square Vaccination Center since mass vaccination commenced on 11th October. Because when we began here alone, about 400, we have been rising to 700, we have been rising to 900. But when you compare down in the old tax park, we are over 2,000 per day. So which meaning the rain hasn't affected. Okay? Yes. And most of these are the people working in the arcades, border borders, taxi drivers, those who have their business within the center, though KCCA has gazetted areas in their divisions, and vaccination there is ongoing. And also there is a massive turnout. Johnson and Johnson vaccines have been given to those receiving their first jabs with Pfizer and AstraZeneca vaccines being administered to those attending their second dose. Adiana Kuti and Ivan Yuko, UBC. Members of the Parliamentary Forum for Children have been challenged to come up with a legislative agenda to address the plight of children in Uganda. Speaker of Parliament Jacob Olanya emphasizes the need to shift from rhetoric to action in finding lasting solutions to challenges faced by children. He was speaking at Serena Chigo during the opening of a two-day workshop for members of parliament sitting on the Parliamentary Forum for Children. The children are proud. Children are God's way of sustaining humanity, his own image. We must never interfere with it. Stigmatized by society and neglected by parents, the plight of children remains everyone's concern in Uganda. This was emphasized during an orientation workshop for members of the Parliamentary Forum on Children. This leads some of us to find comfort in harmful behaviors such as drug and substance abuse and engage in crime to survive. It is our oversight function as members of parliament to keep the executive arm of government accountable on various programs and projects. Unfortunately, even respectable members of society have been cited in abuse of children. This, according to members of parliament, sends a bad example. A mother one neglected the son, and the child, the boy, is a border border rider. But the father is a member of parliament. We shall not allow this right on our speaker. I'm glad I'm here. We shall work together. And if they don't sign up, we shall expose them. It's also very ashamed and very alarming to hear that there are some main legislators who have abandoned their duties. They have produced the children, and some of them are abandoning the responsibility of helping their children. I think that is the worst scenario in this country. This kind of situation is said to be worsened by the COVID-19 lockdown that has seen schools closed for nearly two years. What they know best is to discuss about love affairs. Girls, when they are going to fetch water, they discuss about their boyfriends. For the boys, they have nothing to do apart from discussing how to convince a girl child. We are having a very idle men. Men have been idle. They are coming back home early. Some are even ending up defiling their own children. So we need to act very fast as a, as a country, as a government. We need to find a way of uh, protecting our children. When we continue keeping children at home, they become so redundant. They become so demoralized. That is why many of them are getting pregnant. So let the schools be open. But other than enumerate challenges, 
solutions have to be found. Finding a way to deal with birth certificate in the light of disputed fatherhood is very important and it rests on you, ladies and gentlemen. No one else can make the change in the legislation but you. All these speeches about all oh, children, all oh, remand homes, oh. you see, there are symptomatic discussions. We're not dealing with the real problem. The real problem is how do you change those families to make them more active and capable of supporting those children to keep them off the streets. The Speaker of Parliament, Jacob Olanya, wants formulation of a legal framework and legislative agenda for promoting the welfare of children. Give me a legislative agenda. Tell me the kind of problems to have, which, can, which ones can be dealt with by petitions, motions, bills. Tell me. I want to hear. Stop discouraging me with your infectious negative uh, sentiments. Give me a reason to fight on. I know that you are fighting along with me. The Parliamentary Forum for Children is a lobby group initiated by the 7th Parliament. It is committed to upholding the rights of children with their motto, being children first. Henry Okrut, UBC. Mubende district leadership has welcomed the tarmacking of municipal roads for their areas' facelift. This was during the groundbreaking ceremony for the USMID in the district at an event officiated by the Minister for Lands and Urban Development, Judith Nabakova. The Minister for Lands and Urban Development, Judith Nabakova, has inaugurated a multi-billion road project in Mubende district. The road construction project under Uganda support to infrastructure development is supervised by the Minister of Lands. We have Kavahe Gakasana Road of 0.843 kilometers at 4.6 billion. The works are in progress. The recent the program is a program for results. You get resources according to how you have performed. And I'm happy to note that Mubinde hit the road running you have been performing well. I thank the mayor, the town clerk, and the fraternity of Mubende for this. The event was attended by the district woman MP, municipal mayor, town clerk, DRDC, and area residents. Honorable Minister, we are expecting the beautification of this town. We are thinking that after this project is done, our town will be so beautiful. Uh, we are also thinking that... Uh, uh, there will be a boosting of local economy because when the roads are good, uh, they also at least make people to work and to do their business well. I would like to assure you that as a chief monitor, with all the teams at my disposal, we'll do our best to monitor value for money works as well as credible works which will stand the test of time. The district leadership, however, still believes this is a drop in the ocean as the municipality is rapidly urbanizing. I want to again thank the government of Uganda, the NRM government, for choosing Murende municipality and Murende district at large as one of the municipalities that are going to benefit from this project. Judith Nabakova emphasizes value for money during the rehabilitation and construction of such roads. This is a project of results. You are now going into a mock assessment exercise. It needs a lot of work, a lot of teamwork, a lot of preparation. Whenever you get the 90, you've been talking about. Local leaders, however, reminded the Minister of Continued Land Evictions in the district. Robert Onyango. UBC News. Furthermore, Uganda Tourism Board and other tour operators have urged government to increase the budget allocation that goes to promoting Uganda because their mandate for marketing the country is costly during the orientation practicum on conversation and sustainable tourism for members of the 11th Parliament at Hotel Africana. 
The Deputy Chief Executive Officer, UTB Bradford Ocheng, uh, urged parliamentarians to ensure that implementation of tourism fund start. Tourism is highlighted in Vision 2040 as a key growth sector and driver for Uganda economic transformation and one of the priority programs in the National Development Plan. However, there was serious drop in tourism at the peak of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uganda was 136 out of 140 in the Tourism and Travel Competitive Index of 2019. According to Uganda Tourism Board, diversifying the tourism sector in Uganda requires money, yet what is allocated to UTB to promote Uganda in the national budget is small. About, uh, uh, But of course, if you compare this to what our neighbors do, like Kenya, Kenya puts 140 million dollars in promotion, Egypt puts 330 million dollars in promotion, even a company like Ghana, Ghana puts 30 million dollars in promotion. So, uh, again, in terms of funding, we can't compare. Uh, compared to our competitors in the rest of Africa, uh, marketing budget for UTB, uh, tourism board is quite low. So I would really love to see our members of parliament support a, a, a bigger budget for our tourism board. More infrastructure in terms of our tourism roads and um, accommodation capacity in and around. Uganda Tourism Board also wants Parliament to actualize the Tourism Act of 2008 and put in place the Tourism Development Fund. The Tourism Act uh, of 2008 provides for the establishment of a Tourism Development Fund. It is in the law. So we, as a, as a, as a, as a regulator, we just, we, we just we just want to actualize the law. We want to implement the law. We want to make it implementable. And to implement it fully, there should be a, a tourism development fund established. So how to resource it is now maybe uh, that can come out in the regulations. Yeah. The tourism operators, UTB, plus Uganda Wildlife Authority and Ministry of Tourism, have patterned with members of the 11th Parliament to launch a parliamentary forum for conservation and sustainable tourism with the aim of having legislators as the voice for tour operators in the August House. Target as uh, forum members is also to, to talk or to give a voice or even to be the mouthpiece of all the Ugandans and even other sectors, other colleagues, pledging, asking the members of parliament to think about the budget of the UTB. Because once the budget is there and we know what it's going to do, it helps us as a forum also to talk about it and also to fight, to talk with other committees like State Minister for Tourism, Martin Mogara, emphasized the need to promote domestic tourism, parliament, to support other sectors like road infrastructure and the revisiting of the proposal by the Parliamentary Committee on Trade to introduce a tourism development levy. That if you collected such monies, we are not saying $10 like the committee had suggested. We can look at a more manageable figure, really, that is more convenient for every traveler. And I don't know how we can do it. I wish we'd only push it to those that are traveling out there for leisure so, so that we stop them from going and spending the money there. They better spend it here. What? With emphasis put on conservation, other stakeholders advise Uganda Tourism Board and Wildlife Authority to change their strategy for promotion to conservation-led marketing. Rally the entire communities within and around the Albertine to plant more trees. Not only to plant, but to look after them and grow them. We think that oil, which is very finite, within 20 years will not be there. But the traditional economies of these areas, agriculture, tourism, will be there for millennia to come. Wildlife conservation is faced with challenges of human-wildlife conflict. Uganda Wildlife Authority has therefore implored parliamentarians to support their budget and efforts. I'm Navka Farida and Stephen Kalisia in Kampala. The Minister for Water and Environment, Sam Cheptoris, has urged stakeholders to work closely with government to promote hygiene among Ugandans. The minister was addressing different stakeholders as they convey, convened to celebrate the Global Hand Washing Day. 
change. We need mindset change. Stakeholders promoting hygiene have commemorated the Global Hand Washing Day at the Ministry of Water and Environment Headquarters in Luzira. Uganda's hand washing performance remains low despite an increase in vigilance and appreciation by the public to wash hands. In 2007, of Ugandans washing their hands with soap and water to a current 44.7% and 54.7% in rural and urban areas respectively. Ladies and gentlemen, those figures still look miserable and they are below what we want to achieve. The Ministry of Environment has given out over 1,000 reading material, trained over 400 ambassadors, and translated hygiene messages into local languages to create awareness on hand washing. In Uganda, we started with six, now we have moved, and we have also asked those ones who have not reached because we've had challenges in some areas. Two languages are very similar, but when you write it down, they become different. They can understand each other. We have had to sit with them and see which word we remove, which might not be very useful in your culture, even if people are from the same region. Parliament and cultural institutions representatives have committed to support efforts towards promoting hygiene. So what is very important is for you to tell us what you need us to do. And we coordinate and work together. For instance, if the cost of water is the problem, why don't we start mobilizing? And we make many members of parliament to realize that the cost of water needs to be brought down so that many people will be able to wash their hands. Washing hands should be an obligation to everybody. And we shall make sure that we wake up our people not to be complacent. Minister for Water and Environment, Sam Cheptoris, emphasized the need for more sensitization on hygiene-related behaviors. The, the schools should introduce hygiene. When, when, when a patient goes to hospital, when a mother goes to hospital, the first thing is not to, to give medicine, but the first thing is to talk to them. How did this child get diarrhea? This year's celebrations have been marked under the theme, The Future is at Hand, Let's Move On. Ivan Kahua and Sebira Andrew, UBC News. And that shall take us for a short commercial break and we'll return after these messages. Please stay tuned. Today in history. On the 15th of October 1979, then governor of Central Province, Major Abdul Nasur threw girls out of their accommodation in Kampala. This came after Nasur had found the girls throwing rubbish from a flat. He caught the girls throwing rubbish through the windows to the streets and ordered the girls to pack up and go to their parents. My home, I smile when I think of you, Uganda. My home, my home. When I look at you, Uganda, my home, oh my Uganda. I know with you I'll always stay forever. I know, I know, because I feel that we belong together. My home, my home, under the sun so bright, under the moon at night, and my home. MTN, we look forward to starting another exciting journey together to grow our home, Uganda.
It's Freaky Friday from Airtel. Buy or gift. Buy or give. Get freaky too. Dial star 149 star 10 hash to load a Freaky Friday bundle for you to enjoy the best offers on voice and data. To buy a bundle for friends and family, dial star 149 star 10 star 5 hash. Freaky Friday with Airtel. Buy or gift a bundle today. Dial star 149 star 10 hash to get started. Airtel, the smartphone network getting go tv was the best decision gems has ever made finding a good place to watch football was never easy but it was costly until gems discovered something big now we can finally enjoy the benefits of homegrown advantage with a decoder and one month of go tv value for just 25,000 shillings, enjoy the world's biggest leagues and cap competitions. Go TV Uganda. Love it. It's no secret that ICT makes learning easy. The strides made in our field couldn't be possible without it. And now we can watch our favorite show. Ah. My radio is my best friend. UCC provides an enabling regulatory environment and policy guidance for healthy competition. We also facilitate ease of doing business in the communications sector through licensing, standardization, spectrum management, tariff regulation, rural communication development and consumer empowerment. An informed consumer is an empowered consumer. UCC supports local content and innovations. Driving the development of a robust communication sector in Uganda is Uganda Communications Commission. Welcome back. You're still watching the UBC News tonight, broadcasting live from Nile Avenue. In the world of business, Nita U has officially handed over an online portal to the Ministry of Internal Affairs that amalgamates all its services for quality service delivery. The portal is part of the innovations that Nita U is rolling out on the national IT backbone infrastructure that was established to digitize all government services. I was privileged to witness this handover. Internal Affairs has received an e-portal courtesy of Nita U. This has come at a time when the Ministry of Internal Affairs is decentralizing its services to various regions of the country to hasten service delivery while reducing the number of people the headquarters hosts. At the height of COVID, before COVID, we had reached 1,700 people enrolling. That is enrolling alone. If you do, if you add almost equal number to pick the passports, Passports alone, you are, you are talking of 3,000 people in one compound. So that's why we are emphasizing, number one, regions. Number two, going to missions. Number three, digital. For decades, unscrupulous middlemen have been defrauding ignorant citizens who seek the ministry's services. But the new portal will reduce this approach to a greater extent. The biggest complaints are for this uh, uh, middlemen. This uh, crowds to monopolize that uh, lack of information, the information gap. So they keep there waiting for you in the line and they have been taking people's money. But you don't have to do that. You log on to the system and you pay online. The Ministry of Internal Affairs is calling on the public to utilize this system and only come to a physical office when required. We've been having uh, three portals, uh, the main website, the passport portal, the immigration services, which are also many. So this endeavor is to bring all those services together in one website. Anybody who wants to reach us will reach us through that one website. Nita U is targeting to connect all government MDAs onto the national IT backbone infrastructure by 2030, but insists that sufficient funding is a prerequisite to achieve this goal. Wadulo Makanold, UBC News in Kampala.
And well, in the world of sports, Uganda has launched the Athletics for Development Manual, which aims at mobilizing young people with special attention to those from marginalized backgrounds to support their overall growth through sports. State Minister for Sports, Hamson Obua, performed the honor at the launch of this manual that they target to reach the entire country. History has been made for Uganda that has launched the Athletics for Development manual, which aims at interesting mainly the youth countrywide into sports. Uganda being the first country in the world to implement the Athletics for Development project brought on board a wide range of stakeholders locally and internationally to promote development through sports. The Minister of Education and Sports, as the lead partner, Working jointly with sister ministries, including gender, labor, and social development, health, and office of the prime minister, remains committed to use sports, especially athletics and local traditional games, as an effective tool for personal and social development. This project grew out of the kids' athletics program, which is athletics meant for kids under the age of 14. Athletics for Development also looks at integrating athletics as a sport with a development aspect of a human being. Through the FOD, we also expand to other social concerns of our community. We use it as a means to, social, to mobilize communities to participate in sports as well as in things that, that are necessary for their development. For example, we look at environmental aspects, we look at water and sanitation, ensure that the children and the older person through the Atlas for Development are hygienically healthy. We look at aspects of uh, livelihood support, the young people are able to develop life skills, to manage themselves very well, and also learn some bit of skills other than running or sports. The manual emphasizes use of readily available material to ensure play through running, throwing and jumping, which is the basis for almost all other sports disciplines. This project is achieved in collaboration with several partners, notably German Development Corporation, GIZ. Well, and that brings us to the end of our 8 o'clock edition of the News Tonight. Let's take a look at the headlines before we sign off. Brought to you by How to get points. Just use MTN to make calls, send SMS, load airtime, buy bundles, or pay for MTN subscription services. Everywhere you go, MTN. President Museveni commends UJCC for uniting followers. Hundreds turn up for COVID-19 jobs in Kampala. Zajirinya slapped a fresh charge for inciting violence. And in sports, Uganda to use Tony to garner points for Commonwealth Games. Was brought to you by Everywhere You Go, MTN. And with that said, it's time for the weather update with Kutesa Mili. Let's take you away. Thanks for tuning on on UBC once again, Kutesa Mili, with your weather update. We are still continuing with thunder showers, more especially around the lake showers and the western part of our country. And seeing the weather report, we are having the highest of 44.9 millimeters of rainfall that was across in Tebe. Masaka was 29.4, Gulu was 15.5, Wushen was 12.3, Kalengele was 10.8 millimeters of rainfall. Seeing the satellite picture, we are having a rainbow over Africa, including our country, Uganda. But inclusive of this, we have the moist winds blowing from the Indian Ocean in combination with moist winds from Congo Airmas meeting within our country, plus the enhanced local activities bring us the weather that we are experiencing lately. Tomorrow morning, though, we expect to wake up with light showers across lake showers and the western part of our country. The northern part of our region towards Karamoja is expected to have sunny winter 
showers. After new hours, we expect a continuation of light showers in southern part of our country and a continuation of sunny intervals in northern part of our country. Temperature is up to 30 degrees of maximum across northern part of our region, 27 across Arua, including our capital city Kampala. Kamala Highlands with the lowest of 23 degrees Celsius, though Kasese and Marara with 29 degrees Celsius. News moving out of Uganda to wearing the cities across the globe are forecasting light showers across New York with a maximum of 24 degrees Celsius, Nairobi and Paris with cloudy conditions and sunny intervals at a maximum of 27 degrees Celsius across Nairobi, Cairo and Dubai with sunny conditions at a maximum of 34 degrees Celsius across Cairo. Thanks for tuning on New BC. What's your simo? You can view our website. Put a family is by name. See you tomorrow. Stay tuned. Yes, and thank you, Kutesa Mili. That brings us to the end. Join us later on at 10 p.m. for a lengthier bulletin. My name is Wadulo Mark Arnold Mugalu Muhammad on Sign Language. Let's see you at 10. comfortable. Too we comfortable. Petra get deco, what are you still doing here? When are you leaving? Well, Richard invited me here and you are not here. And you're praying for me not to return? It's one prayer not answered. Wanji. Never. Ever. Bring a woman. <laughs>